what better time to go through the 300 GR build than uh, when we're out actually using it. And sort of walk through a few things, how we pack things and set it up. It's a little bit light, we're only out here for a night getting some photos, um, so we don't have it completely loaded in the back. But this is the, uh, our favorite things are these types of bags. Um, you can see these are a couple of drift ones. We put wine and bottles of spirits and stuff in those, um, whether it's in the wagon or in the chops inside the canopy. We're a huge fan of these style of bags to put everything in. You can grab them out um, and uh, put all little bits and pieces in them. It does make it easier for us. Um, we are constantly in between different cars, so it makes it quite easy just to grab that back out and chuck it in the back of a canopy or um, that sort of setup. So that's what we, that's exactly how we pack our wagons or canopies is, is utilizing those styles of bags to put all your stuff in um, and stops things from rattling around a lot of the time as well. But in the back here, this is the Tourer setup. This is the same sort of style of setup that we've been doing in the back of the 200 wagons or 300 wagons um, over the past three to four years. Um, we used to sort of call it the Pro Touring package, but um, Loaded Drawers have now finalized a few set designs for the back of the 300 or 200 series. Um, and now this one is called the Tourer package. It's our more common setup, having a, a 40 to 55 liter fridge in here you can fit an angle in there as well um, the largest fridge that we typically put in here is the 55 litre Dometic it's a really good size fridge to put in the back of the wagon and um, it still has the ability to remove this we can take the fridge out and put a false floor in there too to have a, a bigger open area if you need when you're not traveling uh, it still retains um, the side wing the lift up lift up wings the side faces um, we have a 2000 watt inverter down here and a 200 amp lithium behind the fridge. So that's exactly how we used to do it in the 200 series as well. Uh, ARB twin compressor down in here. I would lift it out, but I'm not gonna because it's got all stuff in there, but there's an ARB um, twin compressor in there. We also have the Red Arc BMS down the side there. Uh, we all have the new TVMS Rogue unit down inside here along with the inverter. So we have nothing, uh, the only thing along the front, mounted on the front of this drawer unit now is a main isolation switch and a BCDC 1225 core charger. So we run the core in conjunction with the BMS and uh, we average around 55 amp, or 50, 55 or 57 amps of charge um, going into the 200 amp lithium, which is awesome. Uh, it's, only, it's sort of new for us to run run the two in conjunction. It was sort of most cars these days have got alternator capacity to be able to charge at that rate and still be able to charge um, into the van at the same time, have adequate capacity to do both. So um, sort of figure why not if you're only doing a shorter two to three hour drive for the day to boost in as much charge as you can. Uh, so that's basically the back. Every wagon comes standing with a little orange white tailgate light. They're programmed through the Red Vision screen, so white. Um, and then there's uh, amber as well, that one there. So, and the cool thing about the Rogue unit is that we can actually dim these down so we can hold that and it slowly dims it like that, which is pretty cool. It's a new feature with the Rogue. On ours, we, um, we're running this airbag man system here. Uh, we were trialing it, and it, as in completely old school manual inflation system, um, it's pretty much bulletproof and has a, a zero failure rate, So, which is quite important um, for us. We were constantly trying different things and developing um, for ease of use. Obviously, you don't have the wireless capability of inflating and deflating with this sort of system, um, but it's uh, it's pretty much proven to be an absolute bulletproof system. We're still developing and working out with a few different products at the moment though for airbag inflation. We'll keep you all sort of posted with what we develop there and what we end up going with in the future. Um, this is a laminated tabletop. It does slide here and out of the way like that. Very, very clean system. It's a Kion 
barrier up in there. We can also put the top shelf in here with Kaon. Um, we have developed our own backing board that clamps to that and then goes down and clamps onto the top of the drawer unit so nothing can fall through. Um, like that. Pretty cool. Very clean, neat system. Uh, this is a GR Sport, 300 series GR Sport. Um, it's a three inch lift on 35 inch tires. So most typically we do the front at two inches. Uh, for guys, a lot of our customers are towing bigger vans than what we typically tow and that have heavier ball weight. So, so put it this way, if you got like a lot of our customers, we build them that way because most of you are running 21, 22 or 23 foot vans and have a ball weight to suit. Most of the ball weights are around 300 kilos on average, uh, between 280 and 350. Uh, and that amount of ball weight means that you can't have three inches of lift at the front. It will simply pivot the car up too much and, um, and then you end up squatting and relying on too much airbag pressure um, to be able to have it as a level ride. And it's the worst thing ever is when you need to end up um, putting too much pressure in the bags to keep a level ride because all it's doing is ruining your ride quality, your comfort. Um, all of a sudden your shock control goes out the door and you're pretty much riding on airbags the whole time so that it's not squatting too much. Um, that's why a lot of you, if you question why it's a two inch lift instead of a three inch lift, by the time you put your van on the back, you've got three inches of lift in the front. Um, it's a compromise. Unfortunately, we can't have a three inch lift and be putting a big van on the back. It just doesn't work on a short wheelbase vehicle. Um, on the chops, you can sort of get away with it a bit more. The longer wheelbase means that there's sort of less pivot. Um, and uh, we still sort of set the chops up at about two inches, two and a half inches in the front with that same rear coil. Um, 35 inch tires, um, as far as approvals go federally, they're almost through. J Max are still finalizing um, the speedo correction units and stuff like that. So we will not be putting 35s on your car just, just yet. We're trialing it. We're having a good run with the 35s just to see clearance fitment, um, how the transmission handles it. The 10 speed auto is an absolute freak. Um, in comparison to the 200 series, it adapts to tire size and loading really, really easily. Uh, it sort of learns learns how you're driving it and with the current load on the car. But a 33 inch tire is still the ideal size tire to run on the 300 series. Um, it, it obviously a lot less load, your brakes work better, all that sort of stuff. So <clears throat> it does look good and they fit 35s with ease. It's a more staunch, chunkier looking car. Um, but yeah, watch this space. We'll keep you all posted when those approvals do come through finally for the 300 series. Um, flare kits. Now, flare kits are a standard on every single car, unless we're running a 265 on a narrow offset. So they just have to be done. It has to have that coverage out past the tread over here. Um, and uh, at the front, it looks quite tough as well, but it stops a lot of the stuff from being thrown up on um, up the side of the car. Yeah, so that is why we run the flares. It does look quite fat on a, on a standard um, POS, POS 35 or POS 40 offset with a 285 tire. They do stick outside the back of the car here quite a lot in comparison to a 200 series. They are a bit chunkier and broad at the back. On a 300, they tuck right in and a lot of the tread hangs way out past the flap. This is part of the uh, the mud the, the flare kit, so this wider mud flap comes right out an extra 50 or 60 mil to cover the whole tread block. So that's why um, you'll see the flare kit as a standard on all the J Max part um, component on your quotes is for that exact reason. This is the Summit Deluxe Bar from ARB. It's the new style in our um, Pro Touring powder coat. Looks so clean. They've done a really good job on this new bar with the 300. Sort of tucks right in a little bit further. It's a bit not, doesn't hang out as much past the front as what it did on the 200 series. 
looks quite staunch. We're just running a, a worn VR um, 12S winch in there. It's standard on all the builds. And a Safari snorkel, GME, UHF. Uh, we've got the um, half length base rack as well. We think it looks really quite tidy. Sort of suits it. It means that we can still use the sunroof. Uh, we've got three little boys and they absolutely love being able to see out the sunroof. Um, but yeah, we can still put solar up there, um, hang shovels off the side, put some lights up there too. That, those are the lights are all powered through the Red Vision unit, so nice and tidy. And um, I'll show you inside here. This is all standard GR, except for the formats, obviously. ARB formats, they've done a really good job on them. We really, really rate these formats. They're a standard on all the builds. Got the Alpha in cab controller <coughs> um, that we give you guys a run through how to use that on all the builds on handover. Um, if you guys feel like being technical and going with the electric in cab controller, um, we do quite a few of them. The manual shocks are still just as good, they have the same amount of adjustment. Um, and a lot of the time you don't need to adjust the shocks all the time. So it's sort of, if you like that extra bit of trickery in your build, um, you can control your shocks from, from on the fly through that screen. Um, we've got a little uh, click on phone holder there with the quad, quad lock, the phone sits in there nicely. And also the wireless Apple CarPlay module too. So every time you turn your car on, you don't have to plug your phone in. It just comes up on the screen for Apple CarPlay. Um, XRS UHF and dash cams and the HD safety daves. They're a new model now, so every car sort of comes out with the new HD safety daves because most caravans now are running the HD cameras too. So um, <clears throat> we also have a DPF back tune in here by D, the, the team at um, DPU, Diesel Power Unlimited up in Mackay. They still do all of our tuning. <clears throat> Absolute gurus at it. Um, we are super impressed with how these things are performing with the tune in it. They've been out for quite some time now, so the guys up there have been able to perfect them for us over and over again. The tow tunes, all of our cars are, are pretty much towing, so uh, we don't do sort of mad, crazy boost tables. A lot of overfueling, everything fits well within the parameters of how the car came from factory. Uh, so yeah, um, the numbers um, will bring up a um, dyno sheet and show you guys what how we are doing it through the boys at DPU. Um, you can definitely push it further if you guys needed to, but we try and keep everything still quite respectable. It's just to get that power and torque levels back up to where it needs to be because we're adding all this extra weight to the car. So. Um, we still yet to put, we've got a, um, a fat fab exhaust to chuck on the back of this one. Actually looking forward to that. Um, we've got a sealed air box under there as well. Um, and uh, one thing you will notice is this. It's a, a matte PPF from the team at Codex. It is a um, SunTech protection film, lifetime warranty. Um, and it looks the part. It's an Arctic white car with a matte PPF on it. It just um, almost looks like it came out of the factory with it. So we are so stoked with it. We've got a gloss wrap on this on the wheel arches and, um, and the matte PPF on the car. Anyway, guys, um, I hope that makes some sense to you. That's a bit of a run through our GR wagon. And um, we've got a bit of motion content coming out of this thing actually driving and towing and doing a little bit of off-roading to sort of help you visualize uh, how they work, how they sit when you're um, using them off-road. Um, Brandover's tank in here as well. In all the wagons, the standard is the 87 litre replacement tank, meaning that you get an extra 50, I think it's 57 litres extra. So it takes the capacity to 167 litres over 110. So yeah, 57 litres extra. Um, we can put a 150 litre at the back here as well if we run a rear bar. So obviously pull the spare tyre out. We can, we can run a, a 150 litre at the back and the extra 57 under the body um, and have an absolute mountain of diesel to take with you. But for the most part, the wagons um, are pretty good on 167 litres. 
So, yeah, anyway, guys, let us know what you think. Um, we've got a few coming through like this. Our shed is absolutely chockers with GR Sports at the moment. Um, the electric KDSS um, still works with the car with these shocks. Obviously, the factory electric shocks are disconnected and pulled out and thrown away, but we figure that we're replacing them with um, electric control shocks anyway that have a bigger adjustment over the factory ride. So the, the KDSS still works perfectly fine with the five drive mode selection, and then you we, we adjust the JMAC shocks um, in accordance to what we're doing and what sort of drive mode that we've selected for the car. Uh, so, yeah, for all you guys wanting to know if the if the drive modes and the KDSS still works. Yes, it does. And yes, you can definitely feel it still working. So, all right, guys, um, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, any comments or questions, just drop them below. Cheers.